All right, picking right up from where we left off last time. RPG maps episode four. Is it? I don't know. Uh, we're doing rivers and tributaries. We're gonna read the introduction here. The drawing and placement of rivers can be a really tricky but really rewarding experience when making your map. The vision of mountain streams cascading down the mountainsides and rushing into mighty rivers is a powerful one. Rivers are one of the best natural boundaries available to a map maker and have served as excellent defensive borders for kingdoms and vying powers since time immemorial. All rivers actually begin quite small as tiny streams of mountain waters that trickle downhill to merge together forming larger streams called tributaries. Tributaries continue to flow downhill, picking up the easiest path through the land, eventually running into other tributaries and forming a larger river that flows out to the sea. Since water flows around obstacles instead of right over them, rivers and tributaries often have distinct snake-like properties and turn and twist around the land. Cool, 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 cool. Step 1. Decide your general river placement. Taking your pencil, lightly draw your first guideline for where you think a river would start and end. Remember that rivers often begin in the middle of two mountains or hill ranges, so you should place your river somewhere near a range and have it end in the sea. Rivers sometimes originate from lakes, too, though most lakes never spawn more than a single major river, and some rivers will flow through a lake and on down the coast. Alright. I think that a river is going to flow. Can I zoom in more? Yeah. I think a river will flow from... So this is my river. I'm going to make a line... That goes like that. And then we'll make another line. Comes out of this little tip right into there. How do you like that? Alright. And then we'll just put a bridge right here. I like that. This is my favorite area of the map so far. I'm also going to probably put one here. That'll be it for now. We'll focus more on them later. Anyway, that's step one. Awesome. Step two: develop the first river. Oops. Develop your first river line. When you're happy with the initial placement of your river, it's time to draw it in darker. Take your pencil and follow the general direction of your guiding lines. Start at the base of the mountain and slowly draw a wavy line outward towards the sea. I'm gonna read step three too, because I'm just gonna do it at the same time. Step 3. Completing your first river. Starting about halfway down your first line, draw another line parallel to your first and continue it all the way down to the coast. Rivers often widen as they approach the coast, and this gives you a good representation of that. Good, good. Alright. Let's get rock again rolling. Uh, what I'm going to do is pull this. Uh... Fuck me. Uh, it doesn't say to do that in the book uh, quite yet, or at, at all even, I don't know, but that's what I'm going to do. That now flows into that, and uh, do the same thing over here. So, like it says, about halfway down, I'm going to start to just pull it off, run it out. And then let's darken that line up. A little bit. Alright. That was easy enough. I guess. Uh, I don't like how these lines are so very, very, very smaller than the rest of the lines on the map. So, what I'm going to do is bold in and out a little bit. I hope you all don't mind. <laughs> if I bold in this line out. There we go. Okay. Great. Now where's that other one I made? Right over here. Did I make another one or no? It's just those two. Alright, I can live with that. We'll move we'll we'll work with that. Uh, okay. Damn, that's a cool fucking picture he drew in here too. Uh page one twenty three if you got the book. Uh that little bottom right picture of that <laughs> I'm not going to show you a picture of it because I really want you to buy the book. Uh, open the river mouth. Oh, I already did that. Uh, step four, when both river lines touch the ocean boundary and the coast and the river meets the ocean, it's called the river's mouth. Take your kneaded eraser and gently erase between the two lines to form an open river mouth, as I just did. 
Uh, once you complete, you should have a nice looking river mouth. Step 5. Develop a river delta. To attempt something a bit more complicated, you could try your hand at a river delta, which is essentially when a river fragments back into smaller tributaries before it reaches an ocean, forming coastal lowlands ripe for lush crops. To draw a delta, add a few small lines to the river mouth, making it spread out like the branches of a tree. I, I guess I could do that. Why not? Alright, that looks kind of dumb, but... <laughs> Fuck it, man, whatever. Okay. Alright, on to the next part. I think the Rivers chapter was pretty fucking... Sorry, I wasn't looking at the other page. Drawing tributaries. Uh, once you have finished your river, add tributaries that flow f from the mountains and hills. Tributaries often look like branches stemming from mountains and hills. <sighs> Just... <laughs> To simulate these smaller streams, take the pencil and draw a thin, wavy line from the closest mountain terrain to the top of the nearest river. Okay, so we're giving it branches. And then I just uh, pull those branches out. In step 7, after they're finished, erase the top of your river and redraw it like a tributary. Got it. Alright, put my book down. Bang that motherfucker out real quick. Hmm. It's not really a good uh, place to do that one, so let's move on down to here. I'm kind of making it follow the contour of the mountain. It doesn't exactly say to do that, but... Yeah, that looks pretty goofy. <laughs> but whatever, man. I'm just following orders. And step eight. Oh, step eight. Your this is what your river should look like. Okay. Um. Uh, all right. Uh, that was pretty short, so I'm gonna continue going with shore and water lines. Uh. Now that you've defined your land masses and rivers, it's time to put some flair into the continent boundaries. Emphasizing the shores with a bit of decoration can go a long way towards making it easy to quickly recognize land masses. We can do this with a technique that's easy to do, though it may, may take a bit of practice to get good. Okay. Oh, wow. They gave me a little preview on the next page of what it's supposed to look like when it's done, and it, it kind of looks cool. Uh, step one, draw your shorelines. Take your pencil and start drawing a straight line around your ori original coastlines. Lines should maintain about a three millimeter distance away from your original boundary. And should be lighter in weight and richness. This line should not completely mimic your continent outline. And should smooth past any major details in the coastline, only giving a general impression. Okay, zoom out a little. So the coastline should look something like, why am I drawing on step two? Holy shit. What a mess. Alright. Next one. Drawing coastlines. So the coastline is a thin line that's going to follow the edge of my map like this. I don't like how my pen keeps jumping, but there's not really much I can do about that. So it says ignore the major things like that. I guess this is kind of like the depth of the water around the coast so for instance this might be pretty deep but this is ocean deep you know and then like just right here I'm gonna include this because I can this is my map damn it alright so, uh, just a little blurb, something to talk about while I'm doing this. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos on critiques of games that I hold very dear because 
I am fucking sick of uh, people sucking Half-Life's dick, I guess. I love Half-Life, I honestly do. Love Half-Life 2. But, like, it gets old. So you just see the same fucking opinions over and over and over again. Oh, Half-Life is the best. Half-Life 2 is the greatest game to ever be made. Half-Life 1 is the greatest game ever made. Uh, Half-Life Episode 2 is the greatest game ever made. You know, it's just kind of. I I guess I guess in general, I'm just bored of um. Uh, cushy, handholdy, wholesome, uh, ass kissing. Uh, I'm just done with that. I like it when people give a lot of thought into their responses, and I like it when people give a lot of thought into what it is about something that they do and do not like. Is this? The whole thing. Did I get everything? I did. So that's the step right there. But anyway, I'll get to the back to that point in just a moment. Um, step two, lake shorelines. If you have any lakes, make sure to include the shoreline within each two. But, um... Oh, man, what was I talking about? I was talking about uh, reviews, but I don't remember why. Um... God damn it. Uh shit. Fuck. Uh anyway. I can't for the life of me remember where that segue was going. I had to go back and watch the fucking video I was just making to see where I was going with that. I had I said the line uh Ocean Deep and uh I started to think about how things in your own world should make sense. Uh, I was watching a video of some guy breaking down Half-Life, I mean, uh, Fallout, and, uh, something he said got my attention was that I don't mind when things, uh, are unrealistic in the, you know, the conventional sense. I mind when things are unrealistic in the own world's mythos. In the old world, the own world's like laws of physics, because every every universe has its own laws of physics and stuff. Not like physics per se, like dropping things off and gravity and stuff, but like just know the way that things work, the the general rule. And uh, I was thinking about that, and uh, a major principle in drawing maps is to make sure that things are believable. So when uh you place rivers and shit, it makes an awful lot of sense that they they make sense, you know, like, let's say, I don't know, that, my point was, um, your maps don't have to be super believable in a real, real life thing, but if you're not creative enough to give an example as to why something weird is happening, then it's probably a good idea to just follow the natural rule of things. You know, so in the event that this, rivers fall out of mountains and lakes form around mountains and stuff. Uh, just a couple ideas, I guess. Well, really unimportant diet drive. <laughs> so, in any case, step three, continue adding shorelines. Trace another line on the outside of your first short line, trying to maintain a s similar distance between the two. You may include additional shorelines on your map, though two or four, two to four works best. Uh, okay, I don't really understand why you'd add two, but uh, hey, I'm not the expert here, so <laughs> let's get going. So in this one, I'm just going to exaggerate the shoreline even more, and uh, I guess this will be like the drop-off for deep ocean, which... And if that's actually the case, I'd, I'd probably prefer to have gone a little closer in, but I'll live with it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty into this. I forgot to, to uh, continue talking. <laughs> okay. That's my secondary line around my, my beautiful little island. Oh, well, shit. That does kind of look kind of cool, and I've done it. Alright, so, next. Step four. 
You can go a step further and draw some defining lines to better denote the beginning of the ocean. Taking your pencil, draw small lines that mimic small waves extending horizontally from the shorelines. These can be anywhere from a half to an inch long, but should vary only a small amount from one to another. Step 5 is, is the same thing. Each line should be very close to the next and be equidistant from one another. Continue drawing these wave lines until the entire coast has been decorated. You can fill in your lakes too. Once you've finished your ocean lines, it should look something like this. And the picture he drew right there is pretty fucking cool, so uh, I'm going to just bang that out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start in the lake here, I think. Jesus, man. I got a lot of these to do. So yeah, the, 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 this step is to just do this all the way around your island. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to do this in a less awful, horrible, autistic way. I knew that was going to happen. And I may have just come up with something. Okay. I think what I'm going to do... Yeah, what I'm going to do is do this. I'm going to fill in this whole thing. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Fuck. Adobe, just kill yourself. Uh, Alright, let's check the damage. That probably couldn't have gone anymore perfectly. Alright. Great. That's my thing. Uh, control S. Take this. I'm going to fill this with uh, black or something. And I'm going to fill this entire thing, right? I'm going to paste it onto a new layer. Uh, after I've pasted it onto a new layer, and then from that fill, I'm going to make a mask. And then under that mask, I'm going to put a, um, a thingy. A fucking... Who wants it? I'm going to put a, a wave pattern, and I'm going to use this to clip it. Great. All right. So now, what I'm going to do? Select this. Uh, control cut. And then I'm going to make a new layer. Control shift V. Great. Now I'm going to lock every other layer, and I'm just going to fill the inside of that. Control shift V. Change the color to white. And then I'm just gonna pop those fucking holes out. Alright, now this is my mask. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to draw a line. Uh sure, why not? Q. I'm gonna make it longer than the map itself. Okay. Start with it up here. Copy V. Here's my waving lines. I'll take this, put it over this. Oops, I did the wrong thing. Nice. Alright, so that did what I wanted it to do. Kablam! There we go. That only took me fucking 45 minutes longer than I wanted it to. <laughs> All that work and I missed the spot, so uh, that island doesn't exist anymore. Yep, this island does not exist anymore. Goodbye. Alright. Great. Safe. Love it. Cool. Nice. So this is my map so far. Doesn't suck. I, sp I particularly like this area right here. But yeah. Oh, that's actually the end of the chapter. So next time we'll start chapter 3. Uh, tit titties and town nitons. Uh, no, towns and cities is uh, next episode.